we'll pass the offering and uh, we'll just say thank you and appreciate you very much. All right. You've noticed in your, you'll probably want your Bible or want a Bible. There's some back there if you choose to get another one. The first one you have, the first side I'm going to, yours are on two sides. I'm going to be in 2 Corinthians 9 to start with. And I'm going to be reading what you have in your hand there, which is the Aramaic New Testament in plain English. It's a little different reading of some very favorite passages, and I think it will be helpful for us. Now, in the time of the Bible's writing, in the Old Testament, the Bible has two main original languages. What's the first one? Hebrew, Old Testament, Hebrew. What's the second language of the Old Testament? Aramaic. What's the primary language of the New Testament? English. Greek. <laughs> mm, in mine it is, yes. <laughs> in yours it is. But originally they were written in these languages. There are scholars who believe all of it was written in Hebrew and then translated later into originals uh, of others. Um, uh, some believe it was all originally in Aramaic. We have certain chapters in Daniel that are all in Aramaic. Um, we have other items all the way through the book that are in Aramaic. When Jesus was on the cross and said, Eli, Eli, Lambax, Sabachthani, that's usually considered Greek, but it probably was some form of Aramaic and Greek mixed when it was first used like that. Um, the, in the New Testament, you have mainly the common Greek that was only in existence for a couple of hundred years and then ceased to be used. It's not modern Greek at all. It's Koine, because common Greek. Um, and um, that, <laughs> that language was probably most of the New Testament, at least I think it is. I think there are probably a couple of books that were originally done in Hebrew and then translated into Greek. But for the most part, we just have Greek. Now... I'm saying all of that to tell you that this Aramaic New Testament that um, I found in the Bible Hub, those of you that know I do frequent the Bible Hub, it's a very fine Bible uh, software that I don't software it, I just keep it online. <coughs> at the Bible Hub, H-U-B. You look that up, put it, in your, um, put it in your thing up there, Bible Hub, and it'll come up full of all kinds of things that will help you. Now then, you don't have to put it in your computer and you don't have to pay anything. I like those. Now, this is our Thanksgiving celebration. And so I was working to, with the Lord, on what indeed did he need us to do for tonight in reference to Thanksgiving. And the title on your bulletin is Being Thankful. And so one of the things that he brought to my mind as I was working with him on it, the thing in the old covenant is always give thanks. It's always what you do. You know, if you, if you give, he'll give back. If you bless, he'll bless back. Now, he does that, but that's the emphasis of the old. That's the emphasis of the natural, if I may put it that way. That's the emphasis of the natural. It works every time you plant a good crop of green beans, you'll have plenty of green beans to, to um, can or freeze or eat. You know what I'm talking about? One time Lauren gave me these little, this, this little thing of beans, and it was green beans. And I did what, I, what it said to do, but I only had five of those beans come up. And so I planted those five beans in a pot of soil in, in the front yard by the house. And it wouldn't surprise you that those five little beans gave me a handful of green beans. They did. But they didn't give me enough green beans to serve everybody in my family green beans. You understand what I'm talking about? Because they were just a few. 
But those few gave me plenty of green beans to rinse off and put in a salad. And I like raw green beans. What can I say? I like green beans. But anyway, all of that to say, that all works in the natural. In the spirit, what works in the spirit is what he did, I reap. What he did, I reap. Hallelujah. So, if there was something that was accomplished by Jesus in the Spirit, I am given those things. Now, there's still plenty for me to do, but it's not about me giving so I may be receiving. When we tithe on that basis, and many preach tithing on that basis, but that's not New Covenant, that's Old Covenant. New Covenant is he owns it all, by the way. Tithing is a very good place to start. I amen it. But it's not the place to stop. Because in the new covenant, he's working with something way beyond giving and receiving. He's working with a whole dimension of, uh, and I want to say it, it's a step up into another realm of life that you all have because you've all accepted Christ, right? right. When Christ came into your heart, the Holy Spirit came into your heart, right? right? So now we live in the natural and in the spiritual. I used to tell you, 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 you used to be all an, an AM radio. When you receive Jesus, now you can do FM. <laughs> you get the other voice. You only had the voice of flesh. Now you have the voice of Almighty God through the Spirit. So you have the ability to live, and we are called to live on this plane in the Spirit according to the ways of the Spirit. And the Lord has really been challenging me lately to see fruit not in just the natural, but fruit in spirit. <laughs> what He's doing in the Spirit as a result of what He's called us to do. Look on a different plane, because if you're only looking in the natural, it appears that he's not healing very much. It appears that things are suffering pretty much. It appears pretty much in turmoil. And it doesn't seem like the church is winning. However, in the spirit, the opposite is true. In the spirit, the church is winning. The kingdom of God is winning. Souls are being saved massively across the universe. And when it comes to the, the what is it, 1020 window with the Muslims... They're coming to Christ by the thousands. The reports are, whoa, it's wonderful. We're not involved in something little bitty. All we're called to do may be our little bitty avenue, but what we do has eternal reverberations in the spirit that go for eternity. Just like your prayers. And I'll just touch on prayer here for a moment. We pray, we pray mostly about physical stuff <laughs> we're going to get a lesson on that later in tonight's lesson so I'll leave it <laughs> but when we pray it has this level but then it has the and I'm just going to do this for lack of better it has the level of spirit that is having eternal differences period period they don't just what did God say about David's words and about Samuel's word, not one word that he spoke fell to the ground. Not one word fell to the ground. Why? Because it was a spirit planting and it's still moving. It's still doing. All right, now then, if you look to the Aramaic New Testament there in 2 Corinthians 9, my lesson really isn't on giving, but because we're working with thankfulness, I wanted, I wanted you to see a couple of things. All right, he's working here, the first part of it, I'm not going to read, you can a bit later. He's just saying about the service to the saints, Paul uh, is going back to the Corinth and he's making the, them, he's sending some young men, I presume they were young, he's sending some men to them to remind them that they were going to give a gift to the saints in Corinth. And so as he's done all of that, he said in verse 3, I sent the brethren so that the, you would know I had really b bragged on you, had really boasted in you 
on, in Acacia, and I didn't want you to be embarrassed, so I'm going to, I'm sending these to remind me. All right, now then, <clears throat> verse 6. But this, whoever sows, how do you say that word? Thank you. Frugally. My southern tongue doesn't like it. Frugally. Those who sow frugally also reaps how? Frugally. We already said that, haven't we? And whoever sows bounty shall reap with what? Bounty. And then verse 7, I wanted you to see. Every man according to what he is in his mind. Every man according to what he is in his mind. And, and most of our translations read, and according to what is in your heart. And in the Greek, it is cardia. It is the word for heart. But I couldn't check up the Aramaic. <laughs> but I looked at another Aramaic New Testament in English, and they also had mind here. So I'm presuming that in, in um, the Aramaic, it's mind. There's a close relationship. Many times when we would call it heart, they would be talking about the mind. And when they would be talking about the mind, they were talking about the heart because they saw no real division in body, soul, or spirit. They saw no division between the uh, working of my emotions and the working of my mind. They see them as one. All right? The English, the, uh, not the English, the Easterners. All right. Every man, according to what he is in his mind, not according to, and this says grief or grudging, being sorry he has to give, or of manipulation or compulsion, for God loves the cheerful giver. But God is able to multiply every favor toward you, that you may always have whatever is sufficient for you in all things, and that you may superabound in every good work. According to what it is written, he has dispersed and he has given to the poor. All right. But he who gives seed to the sower and bread for food, he shall give and multiply your seed and increase the fruit of your righteousness, that you may be enriched. And I want you to look at verse 11. That you may be enriched in what? All things. With the entire right of a, what's that word? Ah, that you may be enriched in all things with the entire right of an heir. That's not entitlement. That's birthright. Son of God, are you one? There's no male or female there. Yes, we're sons of God, sons and daughters of God. We are sons and daughters of God. We have every right of an heir. Now I'm going somewhere with this, so just hang on to me. That, notice that, the next phrase, that which perfects thanksgiving to God by us. Verse 11, that you may be enriched in all things with the entire right of an heir. That which perfects thanksgiving to God by us. In other words, Paul is writing his thanksgiving to God. Something happens to his thanksgiving as a result of their cashing in as an heir. I don't mean cashing in like getting cash. I'm just talking about working with what they have and what they don't have as an heir. We sang a song, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the rich say, I am poor. All right. That, in effect, is choosing to draw from the spirit that which appears to be lacking in the natural. But if we can draw from it in spirit, it exists, correct? Are you with me? All right. Now then. Verse 12, because of the labor of this service, not only satisfies the wants of the saints, what they give, but also abounds in much thanksgiving to God. For because of the experience of this service, they glorify God that you submitted to the confession of the gospel of the Messiah, and you became partners 
in your right of airship with them. In other words, when these people gave to the saints in Jerusalem, they became sharers in the airship with them. They became one with them. In other words, the bounty that the Corinthians gave, a bounty of thanksgiving to send to other people, the people who received it gave thanksgiving back to God, completing the circle of Paul's at teaching them and being thankful for the Corinthians. Their thanksgiving was perfected through the other's giving. Now, I know it's confusing. And I've decided on purpose. Because thanksgiving, if you study out, I, I didn't complicate it with gratitude. If you study out thanksgiving, you find in the old covenant, give thanks with a grateful heart. We sang it. Give thanks, give thanks, give praise, give praise, give thanks. All through it. You find in the Chronicles um, where that on the assignments of the priests in the Old Covenant during the time of Solomon that there was always a priest standing in the court, the, the holy place, and in the courts giving thanks to God 24-7. They, they had it like they did with the priest serving at the altar. There would be a priest standing in the corner praising God. That was his job all day long. All he did was put thanksgiving over the, over the sacrifices. The priests go into the holy place. Another thanksgiving according to the sacrifices. All was covered with thanksgiving. And I look at that and I'm going, okay, there's something about thanksgiving that we haven't put together. There's something that happens in thanksgiving, in the spirit, that God knew was happening on the Old Testament by telling them to cover everything with thanksgiving. What's going on? We come to the New Testament. Much of the same thing. Much of the same thing. However, if you go, well, let me finish this thought first before we get here because I want it. Becoming partners with them, every person, we in, there is something about thanksgiving that is a part of belonging to God that makes us this one. We, we belong to each other in thanksgiving. And as we learn to give thanks, it looks like it's one person giving thanks. But that giving thanks is a result of some person telling them they needed to give thanks. And it all went in a circle. So that there was no end to the thanksgiving. Now, in our world, now we can go to the other side. In our world, we have a tendency to tie thanksgiving to what am I being thankful for? Now we know we have lots to be thankful for. In our country we've got lots to be thankful for. But I have in my, in my life as a, as a minister of the gospel run into people who've had, and Christian people, who've had awful things happen. And they can't say thanks for that. No matter what they do, they can't say thanks for that. And I really pondered that before the Lord because in, in the case I'm thinking about, it was, it was a lady who had lost a child. And she could not, or well, I quite think, I, I understand that. I'm sitting there as a minister of the gospel like, what can I, what can I say that will benefit or help or do? And I'm, I'm at a loss for words. And so as I was studying it, I began, and, and working with it like this, I'm going, Lord, Throw all that up there. <laughs> In the old, it was always a doing. In the new, there is a doing, but in this chapter, there is something else. And I want us to find it. All right, will you go with me to find it? Because we've been kicked into the spirit in this thing, and I want to show you a little bit about what's at stake with it. All right, verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts, that word could also be translated minds, on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, 
not on earthly things. Remember I said we prayed mainly about earthly things? What if our prayers reflected the fact that we believe the word? And I don't mean just praying the word as a quote or something like that. There's no magic in the English words. I don't know how to say this. You can quote scripture at God 24-7. He knows your heart. And even if you mumble through what you think is scripture, he knows your heart. I believe in memorizing and I believe in, in, in telling the Lord his word. I believe that. But all that is is some gimmick to try to guarantee God's going to hear you. He doesn't have a choice. He lives inside. He doesn't care what language you use. And sometimes there's not any language. There's just tears. Or hallelujahs. He hears that as well. I want you to see that we have cut him so short and we've made all kinds of prayer things to try to get him to do what he was doing all along. He can't not hear you. And as, your child, as you're his child and you're his, his son and his daughter, he can't not answer. I started reading a book by a well-known man on prayer. And I was really excited about it because I wanted his thoughts on prayer. And, and he was talking about God talking to him in the prayer closet. And that just really blessed me because that's the kind of God I find. He talks to me in the prayer closet. He talks to me as I journal. He talks with me. He tells me things. And he gets tickled at me. Now, I'm not surprising him with anything. But he and I have this thing going. And so the, the guy was reading and he said, talking about the joy of hearing his voice. And, and, and he says, well, does he answer me? Well, not every time, but once in a while. Ah! Who invites you for a cup of coffee and refuses to talk to you? Just glad to hear you mumble. I have a, I have a few friends that would just rather feel the... But I at least need to say, you don't say once in a while. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We, we, have, we have really made him much less than he is. Oh, beloved. So when we go to talking with him and engaging with him, and he says, Paul says, pray without ceasing, right? 24-7, my thoughts in, his thoughts in me, and we're going, and he's leading, and he's guiding, and it doesn't make a lot of difference what I choose to do. He's going to be with me. I'm trying to choose so that he's blessed by what it's, we do, because we're doing stuff. All right? You understand? It's not just me. I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me just like you do, not only in church, but when I'm cleaning house or doing what I can't do anymore. I can't really shovel the snow. I, getting old sometimes has some drawbacks. But anyway, you understand what I'm saying. Now, he says, put your mind and put your heart, put your emotions and put your heart where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Why would he say such an audacious thing? Think about it. Now, where are you seated? Right there. You're seated. You're part of his body, right? right. You going with me? Part of his body. Where is his body seated? Right hand of the Father. Right hand of the Father. His spirit is in me. Right hand of the Father. That's where I'm seated. That's where you're seated. And he wants us to look at things from that perspective. Think about things on that perspective. What are you seeing when you sit there? Well, most of us don't know how to get there because we're so interested in getting what we see down here fixed. But you see, he's interested in getting it fixed, but only if he can get you to... You understand what I'm saying? Yes. If we are seated with him in heavenly places and looking out through his eyes, so Jesus, show me what's on the ticket today. What can you show me? Where do you need me to anchor my prayers? What do you need me to be thinking about? What do you need to show me so I can order my day in this natural world appropriately? Oh, beloved. We have yet to unlock the whole thing of prayer. When we begin to unlock it and begin to talk with him and visit with him while we're seated where he is, 
We've been so busy trying to get him to hear us where we are. Foolishly thinking that we had to work at that. No, no, no. He's not going to leave us or forsake us. He hears everything we do and everything we think. And he wants deeply the kind of fellowship that, and we call it in the spirit, that in our mind chooses to be with him there. And chooses to see heaven. And chooses to begin to order earth in our scope. What did that author, our mentron? Is it Metron. Um, or what? The sphere, the sphere of influence that we have, and we all have a sphere of influence, beginning to order it. Now, reading the word and knowing the word is a step in that direction. But what we've done in the body of Christ is we've searched here to straighten out here. And while that has a validity, how much better if we take this and search his mind, which we have, and bring spirit down to f on this. So that the circumstances begin to be ordered by spirit. Now it's not going to do a lot of good for me to pray. Now Jesus, you straighten this out according to the spirit. Because he's likely to say, Iris, you have that spirit. You do the job. Oh. You mean I'm supposed to do something here? Yeah. You're Christ in the flesh walking, right? You don't like that too much, I know, but that's really what you are. And so with the power and authority of heaven itself, he says, think up here. Now, this has a lot to do with thanksgiving, so hang in there. All right. It says, for you died, verse 3, for you died, you died and your life is now hid, hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And then he says from verse 5 down a ways, he says, put to death, get rid of all of these things in your life because they're in the way of the Spirit. I'll just be real frank with you. It's in the way of the Spirit. Get rid of it. You all, you, verse 7, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now <clears throat> rid yourself of all these things. Then, verse 9, do not lie to each other since... Past tense. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices, verse 10, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in, and that word knowledge is full experiential knowledge, in the image of the, its creator. He is renewing you by your experiences with him in his image. Full experiential knowledge is not knowing in the brain. It is knowing the brain that has been confirmed in an experience with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't have full knowledge if you don't have any experience with him. You know, I know who President Trump is. But I don't know the man. You understand what I'm saying? I've never met the man. I don't know the man. I haven't known any of the presidents that I can remember. And I started in my memory. At, uh, I was in grade school when Eisenhower was elected. So I go way back. I've never known any of them. But I knew who they were. I knew about their movements, et cetera, et cetera. I, I know some of the politics involved in most of them. On and on and on and on and on and on. But I never knew the men. <laughs> it's possible to know and miss the person possible to do it. It's not that he's talking about. He's talking about knowing him, grabbing hold of him in spirit, saying, yes, Jesus, I'll sit with you on your throne. I'll sit there. I'll sit there and I'll learn to see from there. And I'll learn to order my area of influence that way. I'll learn that. And when you tell me that you're going to do something that's super fantastic, expialidocious, and I have no way to wrap my mind around it, I'll say, yes, sir. You may still go pale, but I'll still say, yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? Because he's likely to tell you things that you just, there's no way. Oh, yeah? 
just let him tell you. Because the likelihood is there's not only a way, it's coming down the pike. Hang on. Now then, since you've taken off the old self, put on the new, you're being renewed. Here there's no Gentile, there's all of it. Verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothed yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive the other one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive us. The Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues or goodness is put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity or perfect oneness. It's a better way to say it. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Now, I think that there's a connection between sitting with him and this peace. It's not a peace we can lose if we're seated correctly. I'll just let that one sit with you since you got real quiet. Since as members of one body you were called to peace, and what's that next sentence? What? And what? And all I was hearing was and thankful. That's not what I want to hear. B. B. What's the difference in your heart between giving thanks and being thankful? <laughs> one is an exterior doing, which we all do. This one is I'm thanksgiving itself. Because I be thankful. And that's why this is being thankful. He doesn't just want you to give thanks. He wants you to be it. Because it's an essence of himself. It is an essence of knowing the things that, that are wrapped in a heart that is purely filled with thankfulness. The first thing every day. The last thing every day. And 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, and 1,000 times in between. Thankful Jesus. Thankful Jesus. Now, notice it doesn't say for what. It's not about a what. It's about a who. <laughs> yeah. It's about who. It's about him. It's about him and me. There's never a moment no matter what. Because it's not on the what. It's not on who's given to you or what's going right or what's going wrong. It is that I'm called to be it. I'm thankful. I'm thinking now I could rattle off a whole bunch. In light of that, a number of, well, about a year ago, I started, a, I started to practice. And uh, last words out of my mouth at night, thank you, Lord. First words out of my mouth in the morning, thank you, Lord. And that sets my day. And I purposely do that so that my mind knows we're going to be thankful in every situation today. It's not going to make any difference. What about anything? Because I'm, be, I'm being it. He gave me the power, the will, and through that thanksgiving, he can work his word. I'm going to be it. And so I set about. It doesn't change what's here. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is being who he is. Thankful. Just being thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'll thank you. I'll thank you. It doesn't depend on anything. I'm going to thank you. Because from every core place in my being, he is. And I will thank him. And that, believe it or not, has a tendency in my life to pull my eyes. And I'm going to do it this, this way because we always relate to him as up when he's really just right down there somewhere. He's actually, I asked the Lord one time, how does this incarnation thing work? <laughs> yeah, I asked such questions in my prayer. Lord, how does that work? I don't understand how you can be in me. Where are you in me? How do we relate to you in me? Where are you? And all he did was in my, in my being, he just flashed a picture just about like that. It took about a half a second or less for me to see it. And it was Jesus in a manger. 
I got it. I got it. I said, I got it. I'm a quick study if you'll give me a picture. I'm, I got it. I knew because when Jesus was born as a human being, every fiber of his being had God in it. When Jesus comes into our heart and the Holy Spirit comes in, he infuses our being with himself. Every fiber of your being has Jesus. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we can be. And what it does is just when, we're, when we choose, I'm being thank I will be thankful. My heart may be in the tomb, but I'm going to be thankful. And we lift our, it does a whole lifting job so that we remember we're not just of this world. We're of one that co-dwells with it in a spirit plane. And that one is right here too. We just can't see it with natural eyes. You see it only by faith. Remember, we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. So, <clears throat> anymore, I, I'm asking the Lord, what, what do I need to talk with you about? And what do we need to handle to do in spirit what you want in hearts? It's not just in a teaching that goes into mind. What can we do in spirit that works? Our team, I mean, the last six months, they have just excited me in terms of the spirit dimensions that are available while, while we're worshiping with them. I mean, it's just available. You don't have to access it, but you can learn to access it. And I just get kind of carried away. When I got up here, I could... I, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Mm -mm. It's, it, I had a few times I had trouble talking because it just, it just you're, you're in the other place. And what that does is give you such joy and such expression of heart that you just, you know, I'm going, oh, Jesus, Jesus. All right, be thankful. Let the message of God, of Christ, dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God. Now, that's not talking about a church service. That's talking about your daily life, my daily life. Singing to God with gratitude or thanksgiving in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, being thankful and interacting with thanksgiving. And out of that being, expressing thanksgiving, there's a number of things that are occurring in the spirit. Now, there are more that we will find out as we choose to study this topic in light of what Paul says about it. Because in Ephesians, there's much where he says this, this I think it's in chapter 5, this ended up with much thanksgiving for many, uh, by many to, to God. And that was important. And the thanksgiving seems to be uh, an open door, much like if we are thankful, then we automatically have in our minds a, an avenue by which we can begin to think beyond ourselves because we're already being something that we weren't before, by choice. All right? Now, Thanksgiving releases us in heaven to evaluate according to being an heir. Years ago, we had just, we've been in this building now 10 years. We've occupied this space for 10 years at Psalm 19. And it was not long after we moved in that... Um, there was a real dip in the, in the uh, stock market. And um, there was a time where donors giving for everything was, it was just dropped. And um, I can remember being in my office and I was working with, what, what, how are we going to do all this, Lord? And now, let me be very clear. The Lord has always provided for Psalm 19. It is the Lord's business. I don't raise money. We take offerings and people send money. And some churches help. Some churches support because they believe in what we're doing. But, but just the whole idea is God's, 
it's a faith work. All right. And so I was, Lord, what, what, do you want, what do you want us to do? Is there anything here we need to do? And Lauren came in and she said, well, what, what are you working with, Mom? And I, I shared. And uh, I shared because there was something that was needed. I don't know whether it was something in the technical end, whether it was something uh, in reference to the computers or whether it was uh, uh, in reference to our, our camera that we had then. I don't remember what it was, but there was a big expenditure coming. And I said, I, I just don't know quite what we're going to be doing. I, I don't know how. And Lauren looked at me, and I know it, it was Lauren, but it was also the Lord. And out of her mouth came, don't evaluate anything by what's in the bank. Amen. Evaluate all by what God tells you to do. Amen. Amen. And as you can tell, my love, I've not ever forgotten that. But that was just truth. And I go, yes, forgive me, Lord. I have been looking at the natural, trying to figure out what to do supernaturally. It is a supernatural work. It is a work born of spirit. It is a work that I must always lean into spirit to work with what he's going to want to do, not what I might want to do. Amen. I am not able to do what he needs to do. He's able to do it only if I submit to that lordship. Amen? Amen. Then I'm able to do anything he asks. Now, <clears throat> so being thankful releases us as a person of heaven. And I think maybe after tonight, we'll see ourselves seated. <laughs> I'm just choosing to be the thankful person. I'm going to be thankful for everything. <coughs> the waitress that doesn't serve you well. Double her tip. And love up on her and say thank you before you leave. Yeah. Be a minister instead of a critic. Be thankful. For people that really irritate that last little nerve. Be thankful. And ask the Spirit for an opportunity to bless. And show, us, show you how. Because you're a thankful person. And sometimes when they haven't been acting well and you thank them, it makes them even matter. That's okay too. <laughs> It's not what we're after, but that's okay too. But we become thankful people. And so when we come to a day like Thanksgiving, I'm with Thanksgiving like I am Christmas. I love it all. Now let me explain. I know all about all the backgrounds. I know all about how it came about. And yeah, I know 25th of December is not the date. I know all of that kind of stuff. I am just so glad that we have one day in the United States that everybody is aware we need to be thankful. And I want to be a part of that. And on Christmas, I'm just glad that everyone in this world knows that December 25th is where Christians celebrate their Lord's coming. It matters not when it was. If it mattered, he would have told us. So I enjoy. I turn loose and I enjoy it all. But I don't want it to be a season or a day. I don't want it to do that. I want to be thankful in me so that when it comes to Thanksgiving, that's my day. That's my day. I've been doing it all year. I've been doing this Thanksgiving bit, this God Thanksgiving bit, and this is my Thanksgiving. This I will give away. This I will enjoy. This I will bless. This I will do. So that I am a thankful person who does as he commissions. I wrote down a couple of other things and we're done. The first one I said was it releases us in heaven to evaluate according to being an heir. To being a son who owns everything, and evaluating things, which means the smallest of gifts are blessings. It releases all our Father's goodness into our hearts and lives, because if we're thankful, we're safe people. If we're thankful, if we're thankful, we become very safe for the spiritual things of God to rest. 
If we're stressful and greedy, wanting more all the time, that's troublesome in the kingdom. And that's troublesome in the prosperity end. I believe in prosperity. There's nothing else in there for us but all of God. He says, you got you own the world. That's prosperous to me. But part of the problem with emphasizing that too much is the fact that we literally can get sidetracked into a material world that way. And he's after something in the spirit at the same time. I don't, I don't negate it at all. He, he intends for us to be prosperous, both in the natural and in the spirit. But that cannot negate all the others. And I hope you hear my heart. I want it all. First in spirit. First in spirit. All right. And it releases us in something called joy. It's almost impossible to be full of joy and not with our joy exception. You're always full of joy. <laughs> joy is always full of joy. But to be filled with the emotion and the mindset of joy. And by the way, in the Bible, joy is not so much an emotion as it is a strength and a power. Yes. Isaiah 12, therefore with joy will I draw water from the depth of salvation from the well of salvation and I will say bless the Lord it is our strength to pull on all that we have as heirs and it accesses a thankful person can access can get and we know that access word from from the uh, computer world we can access heaven's insight because we're thankful Bitter, um, materialistic mindset folk have trouble with that. And we've all been there and struggle against that. So there's no condemnation there. But we need to understand that in spirit, he calls us to be thankful. Just be thankful. And even if it's a bad day, be thankful. Even if you didn't get the job you wanted, be thankful. Even if it looks like it's going to be a hardship, be thankful. Because it probably won't be a hardship on Jesus and he'll work around it anyway. Be thankful. Amen? Amen. Just be it. Give thanks. Father, thank you. Thank you for loving us so much that you call us higher. You call us to live our lives on another plane. And then to let that plane flow through these physical bodies and minds and hearts. You call us to be who you are. And none of us feel up to that, but we receive your word about it. We receive your word tonight about being thankful. And we're choosing to do that tonight, Lord. As we turn our hearts always unto thankfulness with thanksgiving just around the corner. Lord Jesus, I pray as each of us celebrate the day in the way that you have outlined it for us. Whether we are alone or whether we are with family or whether we are even with people we don't really want to be with. That we would, Lord, find our thanksgiving in your heart. And be very content and blessed to share a meal with you. We're never alone. With all of the angels of heaven standing near. But most importantly, you living within us. Thank you for that. Thank you that being lonely is not a part of our heritage. And that you provided yourself as the answer for that. So Emmanuel, release us into thankful and thanksgiving. And thank you for tonight. In Jesus we pray. And everyone said, Amen, amen and amen.